this first shot is an establishing shot. Uh, it shows where the scene will be taking place. In our case, we did most of our filming in or around this apartment building. So we use this as our establishing shot for the angles to come. This is an aerial shot. Um, excuse the finger, um, but it's used to also show the land, the land around where the scene is taking place. For instance, a city or a landscape. Um, usually it's done in like a helicopter or a drone, but we don't have those kind of funds. We just have a balcony. But it works pretty well here. This is a pan. A uh, pan is a type of camera movement. Follows the character. Uh, we try to get some space in between him and the edge of the frame. That's the leading leading frame. And uh, it keeps the balance intact. Um, gives that rule of thirds feel to it as well. Exciting action, I know. This is a low angle. Uh, we're looking up at the subject, and this gives, a, gives him a feel of uh, intimidation and strength. It raises the status of the character, it lowers the status of the viewer, and then that kind of creates. I mean, look how easily he's just lifting those weights. It's nothing to him. It's nothing. In contrast, we have the, the high angle. This is when you're looking down at the subject, and this creates a feeling of, of weakness or struggle or intimidation from the character. Uh, same weights, and he's just struggling with them. It's the power of the angle. It's, it's all movie magic. Here we have a medium shot, um, it's used a lot in westerns, and it kind of places the character within a direct setting, in this case a small gym area, and it allows the character to perform an action within the setting, within the frame. Um, a lot of times there's multiple characters in a medium shot as well. Here we just have Cameron in a punching bag. Here's over the shoulder, um, I think it's a aesthetically pleasing shot. Um, we get the perspective of the camera, or the character, excuse me, and we get to see where he's going, where he's heading. Uh, it's balanced well with him on the side of the frame. And in this case, it adds a little suspense, like uh, we are wondering what's at the end of the hallway. I'll spoil it, it's nothing, but you, you never know. Here we have a long shot, it's used to place the character within a setting as well. Um, in this case he's interacting with the setting a little bit, he's walking through it. Oftentimes it's, it's of the character walking towards or away from the camera. And here we try to get like a little still shot of the camera not following the subject. Here's a handheld shot. Um, it's used to create like a, a sense of action, of urgency. There's a lot going on. We see multiple subjects at once. We see the vending machine, back to Cameron, back to the vending machine. He's had enough. And finally we have the close-up. Um, it's used to show importance of a, of a subject. In this case we're using Cameron's face. Uh, he's talking to someone and in the close-up you know it's important. It's an important call. It's probably an important scene within the, the movie. And like I said, it allows for facial expressions, allows you to see the face of a character and his changes.